In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 28 and 29 in which we're going to be formatting text. After watching this video, you should be able to modify text characteristics. Once you have entered and edited the text in your presentation, you can modify the way your text looks to emphasize your message. Important text should be highlighted in some way to distinguish it from other text or objects on the slide. For example, if you have two text objects on the same slide, you could draw attention to one object by changing its color, font, or size. Taking a look at step one on page PowerPoint 28, it first of all tells us that we want to click on the Home tab on the ribbon. Then next, it tells us that we want to click on the Slide to Thumbnail in the Thumbnails pane, and this is the one for the Canadian Trail Travel or Rail Travel Overview. And then next, it tells us that we want to double click rail in the title text object. Now the word rail is selected. And of course, we'll notice that when we double click it, a mini toolbar appears above the text. The mini toolbar contains basic text formatting commands such as bold and italic, and appears when you select text using the mouse. This toolbar makes it quick and easy to format text, especially when the home tab is closed. And of course, a quick tip to show the, or hide the mini toolbar, you click the File tab on the ribbon, and then click the Options, then click the Show Mini Toolbar on the Selection check, uh, checkbox. In Step 2, it tells us that we want to move our mouse pointer over the mini toolbar. Next, we want to click on the Color Font List arrow, and that is with the A with the red line underneath it, and the List arrow is the down pointing arrow. Then next, it tells us that we want to click the dark red color box under the standard colors. And of course, the dark red color is the first one. Uh, it's the first row, first column in the standard colors. And should say dark red. When we click on that, we now notice that the text changes color to the dark red. When you click the font color list arrow, the font color gallery appears showing the theme colors and standard colors. Screen tips help identify font colors. Notice that the font colors button on the mini toolbar and the font color button in the font group on the home tab change color to reflect the new color choice, which is now the active color. Next, on step three, it tells us that we now want to move our pointer over the title text object border until it changes into a four-headed black arrow with a pointer, which shall look like this. Then, we want to click it to select the border. Now we'll notice that the border changed from a dashed to now a solid line as you move the pointer over the text object border. The entire text object is now selected, and changes you make now affects all of the text in the text object. When the whole text object is selected, you can change its size, shape, and other attributes. Changing the color of the text helps to emphasize it. And of course, another, another quick tip as well. To select an unselected text object, you can press the Shift key and then click on the text object and then release the Shift key. Next, on step four, it tells us that we want to click the font color button in the font group. So we go up to our font group and we're clicking on the font color button here. And when we do that, we notice that all of the text in the title text object changes from the current active color, uh, or from the current color, which is black, to the current active color, which is dark red. And of course, a quick tip as well, for more text uh, formatting options, you can always right click a text object and then click the Format Text Effects to open up the Format Shape Text Options pane. On step five, it tells us that we want to click the Font List arrow in the Font Group. And when we click on that, we see that a list of available fonts open up with Garamond the current font used in the title text object selected at the top of the list in the theme font section. In step six, it tells us that we want to scroll down the alphabetical list. And then we want to click on Castler. So this is in an alphabetical order. And of course, you'll notice that there is a live preview. So when we scroll down, 
that the font is going to change depending upon what uh, where our mouse point pointer is at. And this is the font that we're wanting to click on. C-A-S-T-E-L-L-A-R. Castellar. And when we click on this, we now notice that the Castellar font replaces the original font in the title text object. Now notice as you move the pointer over the font names, as we just mentioned a second ago, in the font list, that you will notice that the text on the slide displays a live preview of the different font choices. In step 7, it tells us that we now want to click on the underline button in the font group, which underlines the text, and then we want to click on the increase font size button, and that is the larger A with the uh, up arrow here and if we put our mouse pointer over it we get our screen tip that says increase font size and it tells us that we want to click on that and we're going to increase that to size 44 and we can tell that by looking at our font size text box or uh, here which says 44. Now all of the text now displays in an underlined and it has been increased to size 44. Next, on step 8, it tells us that we want to click the character spacing button. And this one uh, is a uh, newer button that's been in the last few versions of uh, PowerPoint. And it has the AV here with a line underneath it there. And of course, uh, when we click on that, we click on the button, we notice that we have very tight, tight, loose, uh, normal, very loose, and then of course more spacing options. And in this case, we want very loose. And of course, when we click on that, we notice that the spacing between the letters and the title increases. So the tighter they are, the closer the letters are together. Uh, when we click on that, uh, of course, the looser they are, the wider they are apart. And then finally, on step nine, it tells us that we want to click on a blank area of the slide outside of the text object to deselect it. Now remember, our text object is surrounded by this border here. So we can just click anywhere else outside. Uh, typically, I like to click outside this little frame area here, and that will deselect it. And when we do that, we'll notice that it deselects the text and now it no longer is surrounded by its border. Then we can click on our Save button on our Quick Access Toolbar. Now on page PowerPoint 29, it talks a little bit about replacing text and fonts. And as you review your presentation, you may decide to replace certain text or fonts throughout the entire presentation using the replace command. Text can be a word, phrase, or sentence. To replace specific text, click on the Home tab on the ribbon, then click the Replace button in the Editing group. In the Replace dialog box, enter the text you want to replace. Then enter the text you want to use as its replacement. And of course you can use that right over here in the editing group. We have the find and then of course replace. And of course here's where you can find what and replace with. And that's where, what we're talking about here. And it says you can also use the replace command to replace one font with another. And you can simply click the replace button list arrow, which that is this down pointing arrow. And of course there is where you can see replace fonts uh, on there as well. And then, of course, when you click on the Replace Fonts, you can replace a certain font with a different font uh, as well. And then you can click on Replace, and it will, re will replace all those fonts. And that concludes the information that's on pages 28 and 29. Uh, you are ready to move on to the next video, in which we're going to be uh, converting text to SmartArt.